and then green aspect right right green aspect i told you green aspect tell me what we what is the next <coughs> role of methane yes that we have to study climate change global warming global warming that's it that we, we we studied in greenhouse gases that average temperature of the earth is increasing so there are some headings here global warming. what is the global warming first tell me what is the global warming, warming of globe because of greenhouse gases like we can <laughs> carbon dioxide Okay, so uh, let me tell you like, the rise in Earth's temperature. Right, rise in Earth's temperature. So, <clears throat> how you can say the temperature of Earth is increasing? Uh, because you know, uh, so in Delhi, the temperature in general, uh, in um, like sometimes like the previous year, uh, say previous year it was forty eight, right? Now this time mm -hmm. this is fifty. So can I say the global warming is taking place in Delhi? Can I say that? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> so, so this time in winter, definitely the temperature will go in minus, right? So say in last time, temperature was, I think, zero or minus four. So in case in Delhi, this time temperature is will be minus eight or minus six, which is minus six. So can I say the ice is coming in Delhi? No. No. <laughs> so what is low? So how you can say the earth is uh, like the earth average temperature? Earth temperature is so what is the temperature of earth? First tell me. Until unless you do not know the temperature of earth, then how you can say that the temperature of the earth is increasing? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Yes. So that was the story behind it, which I want to explain you. Look. It's very easy to say that the global warming, but what is the global warming? Look, uh, average temperature of the earth, what is it? Average temperature of the earth is plus 15 degrees. If these greenhouse gases were not or would have not been there around the earth, the average temperature of earth might be or must have been minus 18 degrees centigrade. But say thanks to these greenhouse gases, which maintain the temperature of the earth plus 15 degrees centigrade. And that's why it is inhibited by the people. So we are thankful to, we must be thankful to carbon dioxide a blanket or rest of the global uh, global uh, uh, sorry this uh, greenhouse gases which have helped us to keep the earth warm otherwise it would have been frozen right so these greenhouse gases help but now the grasses so anything which is in excess is really very really harmful for any system so now the gases are increasing right so when the gases are increasing in amount this average temperature of the earth is it. So this average 15 degrees centigrade temperature which is increasing. So that's how we are saying that the global warming is taking place. How much it have increased? Approximately 0 0.65 degrees centigrade average increase in the last 60, last 16, uh, sorry, last 100 years. Right. In last 100 year almost approximately 0 0.65 percent uh, 0 0.65 degree temperature have increased this is all global. did you got that yes what is the impact of global warming it raises the temperature of the earth's surface okay so what let it increase use ac use coolers Hmm? 0 0.65 is nothing. Uh -huh. So why we must worry? 
because it can keep on rising throughout the years. Okay, look. 0 0.65 is it's a really uh, the temperature i don't think that that we can if, if it increases at your uh, at our room uh, we'll notice it i don't think so can you notice it that either your ac is working in 23 degrees centigrade or 24 no, degrees no 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 we, i don't think i can notice yeah, yeah that's right the temperature 2 3 degrees centigrade temperature we hardly we can notice but when i say the average temperature of the this is really very notable if this temperature will reach beyond 60, even 16 degrees centigrade, believe on me, if this temperature will reach 16 degrees centigrade or 17 degrees centigrade, average earth temperature, what will happen? The complete iceberg which is deposited at north and the south pole, that will melt down. And if it will melt down, the complete land area will submerge inside the water and the 4 meter water will, uh, will be above this ground level or is this terrestrial form. The complete this earth will submerge inside the water. Now you can now what is happening because of this global warming, the icebergs are melting. Due to melting of icebergs, the coastal area are going inside the water, right? They'll be submerged. So if this will it will keep on uh, going like this way, the uh, you must have listened these uh, islands, small islands, Hawaii Islands, right? West Indies. Hawaii Islands, right? All these islands will go inside the water. First thing. Second thing, because of increase in the global warming, the productivity, the crop, will the plant, the animal will be affected abruptly. Will be affected, right? And because of these greenhouse gases, because of these ozone hole, what happening? The ultraviolet rays are coming down. And they will increase the, they will start the mutation, they will start the skin cancer and all that. So these are the impact of the global, right? And the, obviously, the heat is increasing, like the Arabian continent, the desertification, desert formation is, it is accelerated, expression to expression, desert formation. Like, so desertification will take place, the scarcity of the food will take place, a number of these things will be, uh, number of the problem will arise because of this global problem. Got it? Yes. Should I dictate it or uh, it's okay? Yes, please dictate. Please start writing. Now. Global warming. Global warming is the phenomena of Increase in global warming to the phenomena of increase in Earth's average temperature. Global warming to the phenomena of increase in Earth's average temperature. Full stop. Give me one second. Uh, I want to tell you something. One the factual thing. Stop there. Note at all. During the during the past century, during the past century, the temperature of Earth, temperature of Earth increased by increased by zero point six zero point Six degree centigrade, comma. Most of it increased. Most of it increased during the. Most of it increased during the last thirty years.
full stop next point it is believed the rise in temperature it is believed the rise in temperature is leading to increased is leading to increased melting of polar ice cap as well as polar ice what polar ice cap polar ice cap as well as other places like himalayan snow cap full stop over the years over the years this will result over the years this will result submerged of submerging of sorry submerging of many coastal area submerging of many coastal area due to rise in due to rise in sea level due to rise in sea level right so this was the global warming is it clear yes okay so come to the next uh, next heading so what is the next heading and you know why the global warming is taking what is the climate and what is the difference between climate and weather climate is short term oh, sorry weather is short term climate is long term right weather is short term and climate is long term i think you know that what is the weather and climate right yeah climate change look it is written describe a large scale change in the global or regional weather pattern that occurs over a period of many years right? that is the climate change so for example the average temperature of earth surface has been 14 degrees centigrade around 11000 yeah 11000 years ago but it increased by 0.89 degrees centigrade between 1901 to 2012 this is very rapid change in the terms of history of earth's rainfall pattern and also the changing over the time these shift of the weather pattern over the time are what we call climate change but because because by definition the climate change happens over the long period of the time it's not easy to measure the draw a rapid conclusion there are natural variation in the weather and the single air that unusually hot dry wet does not count as a climate change but if the average temperature or amount of the rainfall varies in the same way over the years then the climate change will be happening right because like in uh, the, the data of one year or two year cannot be called uh, the climate change but if it takes it continue for one decade right if temperature have increased this year then we cannot say simply that the climate change have taken place mean the temperature is rising next year it may be go down but in uh, uh, year after year if temperature keep on increasing keep on increasing in every year then you will say that yes the uh, climate change is taking place what is the role of methane methane is potent greenhouse gas over the period of 20 year 
it has effect the warming of the atmosphere about 72 times right so 72 times uh, increase in the temperature have been uh, 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 accelerated by it has been accelerated by 72 times with the help of methane gas so what is methane gas what is the property of methane gas where it comes out tell me it's very important and very interesting and believe on me, you cannot stop the methane gas. That is also important. And that is... Why can't we stop methane gas? We can't stop. Nobody can. Why? So, first tell me what is the methane gas, then I'll tell you. It's a greenhouse gas. Very good. What is the property of methane? CH4? I don't know. This is colorless gas. Yeah, that, is, that's something I know. Yeah. And this is orderless. It do not have any order. Colorless, orderless, and highly poisonous and highly combustible. Highly reactive? Highly reactive as well. So, why methane gas can't be stopped? Go to the source of methane gas. Large amount of the methane gas come out of the volcanic eruption. Can you stop the volcanic eruption? Is it possible? No. Nobody can't stop. Methane gas come out of the sewer lines. Can you stop that? No. no. Largest amount of the methane gas is contributed by paddy cropping. What's that? 75% or 70% of the population of the world is dependent on the paddy cropping. Price. Can you stop the paddy cropping? Uh, what's perigo? Rice, growing the rice. Oh, okay. Growing the rice. So whenever you grow the rice, what do you have to? So uh, rice is just just that that get that grain. That complete plant is called paddy, right? So when you uh, rice agriculture is the start, what you do? Uh, you make the field filled with the water, right? You make it like muddy, right? And then uh, this this muddy land in this muddy land these muddy forms. Uh, the rice grows, right? So, from that mud, this methane comes out. So, can you stop that? No. Whenever the rain takes place, every place becomes muddy. And out of that mud, methane comes out. Every place across the world has sewer line. Methane comes out. That's why methane is natural polluter. You cannot stop the methane coming out. Got my point? Yes. One more thing. Whenever these buffalo, cow, goat, these herbivores, they chew the food, methane come out of their mouth. So, can you stop their mouth? Can you say no. a buffalo or cow, no. please don't chew the food? Shut your mouth because you are increasing the, you are contributing in the greenhouse gases. Can you say that? No. Now, by question was justified. Can we stop the methane pollution? No way. Right. And this is one of the major greenhouse gas after carbon dioxide. Uh, look. So, again, what is the methane gas? Methane is a potent greenhouse gas for the period of 20 years. It's it has an effect on the global warming 72 times faster, 72 times greater than carbon dioxide. So whatever the role of carbon dioxide, methane is 72 times more potent than the carbon dioxide. Fortunately, much less methane product than the carbon dioxide. Right? It means the sources are, uh, it means its main source are from the decay of organic material by some kind of the bacteria, particularly wet condition. And one more thing which I want to bring into your notice, this methane gas is produced by a bacteria. Can you tell me the, what is the name of that bacteria which produces the methane gas? Methane bacteria. Right. They are called methanogens, methane bacteria. Very good. Methanogens. Right. Methanogens. Right. So methanogens are those bacteria which are responsible for producing methane gas. Right. So, fortunately, much less methane is produced than carbon dioxide. Its main sources are 
from the decay of organic material by some kind of the bacteria, particularly in wet conditions, and from the digestive system of the ruminant. Ruminant means cow, buffalo, all those herbivores which have four chamber stomach. Out of those four chamber, one chamber is a ruminant. Right? So all herbivore have extra chamber. We have three chamber. A stomach, a small intestine, and large intestine. We have only three chamber. But these herbivores have four chamber for a storage of food. That is called rumen. That's why these animals are called ruminant. Got it? Yes. Okay. So these digestive ruminant herbivores, such as deer and cow, it is given over here. Herbivores, such as deer and cow. It naturally breaks down the high. Uh, it naturally breaks down the high in atmosphere uh, series of reactions that eventually from the carbon dioxide and water molecules. Methane level have risen by one fifty percent since nineteen. Uh, sorry, since seventeen fifty for several reasons. Rice. Look, it is written over rice paddy field or water locked during much of the time of the rice growing bacteria in this water locked soil release the methane uh, methane they grow uh, level of rice production have increased the steadily to feed the ever increasing the world population so more methane is produced further the growth in the human population has resulted in more animals that we depend on the food including the cattle so the amount of the methane released from the digestion increased too. Scientists have calculated that up to 60% of the 60% oh, what is that? Uh, so scientists have uh, where is it? Uh, yes, scientists have cal uh, calculated up to 60% of the methane in the atmosphere is now produced because of the human activity in some way. Clear? Rule of methane gas? Yes. Okay, so that was the rule of the methane gas. Is it okay or do you want me to not, uh, let you note down? I'd like to note it down. Do you want it? Yeah. Or you will. Need not to dictate? I want you to dictate. Okay, you want me to dictate? So yes. Yeah. Start writing now. The role of methane gas. Methane is methane is one of the major component of methane is one of the major component of greenhouse gases methane is one of the major component of greenhouse gases full stop it is orderless comma colorless comma highly poisonous and highly combustible and highly combustible natural pollutant natural pollutant full stop methane is about 72 times methane is about 72 times Methane is about 72 times more effective, more effective greenhouse gas 
than CO2. Let's talk. Next point. It is produced by rice agriculture, comma, from water logged muddy areas, from water logged muddy. Or marshy water log marshy areas, comma from stomach of herbivore, from stomach of herbivore, comma volcanic eruption and from human activity and from human activity. So let's talk. Methane level have risen. Methane level have risen. by about 150% by about 150% since 1750 all right one more thing Methane gas is produced by methane gas is produced by methanogen bacteria. Methane gas is produced by methanogen bacteria. Right. So this was all about the methane. Uh, one more thing, Afaf, what you need to note down, please note it down this table. This is very important. Okay. Please note it down. This one, this table. This table. The greenhouse gases, they are the major contributor of the greenhouse gas. The leading greenhouse gases, the percentage estimated contribution. Water vapor is the most important greenhouse gas, right? 36 to 72 percent contributor in the greenhouse gas water vapor. Carbon dioxide is in seven, second number. Then third one is methane. Then ozone is the fourth. So please note it down the sequence. The role of methane we did, right? Looking at the evidence, what is that? Temperature record. These are the just statical things which represent 
Uh, so you can go through with that. Like the metro metrological offices in the UK have daily weather record of the uh, since 1869, but written evidence from the diaries and ships logs go back another hundred year. So there are recent weather record. So the record from the over weather stations all over the world suggest that Earth's temperature is increasing. Right. So that is a suggestion from the from 1869. Obviously, it's a like the, the, the UK meteorological department is noting on what is the temperatures. So that's how we came to know that the global warming is taking place. All over the world, evidences is growing that level growing that. The level of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is increasing. The mean, the mean global temperature are increasing. That is global warming. The global climate seems to be changing. Extreme weather events such as flooding, drought, hurricanes are increasing. Right. So this is the outcome of the global warming. Clear? Yes. Okay. Temperature record in nineteen in nineteen ninety eight, the Intergovernmental Panel for the Climate Change (IPCC). You need to remember this organization. Intergovernmental Panel. This is the uh, world level of a panel which is responsible for the study in the climate change. Right. So greenhouse gases, global warming. This is the this this panel is covering. Allocated a lot of data produced a graph temperature in the northern hemisphere, which have updated regularly. Then you can see the graph is increasing. Right, so the temperature is increasing. It is written temperature in zero point. Right, 80, 50, 80, 90, 90, 50, 2000. Right. So from the graph, we can say the temperature is increasing. We have data of measured temperature only since. Mid 80s. Further temperature are estimated from the other data can give an indication of the temperature, but not exact value. So this has resulted in the famous graph known as Hawkistic graph. Right, the fluctuating black line indicate the mean value. This fluctuating black line. This fluctuating black line. It is showing the mean value. Right. So the graph is. Sir, what's a hockey stick graph? This graph is called hockey stick graph. So you know this. This is just a representation. Have you seen that uh, the graph which you see in share market? Have you seen that or not? Uh, what? Graph in uh, the share market. Yeah, once only. That is called candlestick because that look like candles, right? The same way, uh -huh. the, this this graph unit is look like the wavy line. This look like hockey stick. So we call it hockey stick. That's it. Nothing there is exclusive, right? So these are just name of the graph, which help in the like you represent it in bar diagram. That is called bar graph. Got it or not? Yes. So the graph which used in here it is called hockey stick graph. The fluctuating black line indicate the mean value. This black line is indicate the mean value. The graph. The other sources of data are called temperature proxies and the error lines. So in gray and graph, right? These are called temperature proxies. This gray line, gray lines which are like uh, sometimes they are above the black line, sometimes they are below the black line. These are called this wavy kind of the gray lines. They 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 are called temperature proxies. Rising in the atmospheric carbon dioxide level, global warming, and climate change all threaten the human life. Whose range we know that what is the impact of carbon dioxide increase? Frozen isotopes and temperature records. Now, what is that? Arctic and Greenland ice cores are often used as the source of temperature proxies, since how the temperature is increasing or decreasing. Scientists drill deep down into the ice and then analyze 
the air trapped in different layer. This provide a record which goes back thousands of years. Right, the oxygen isotope in the melted ice, the property of O18 and O16. You know O18, O16, or not? Yes. Afa, you know what is the O16, O18? What? O16 and O18. What is which is written over here? Uh, the, the isotopes of oxygen. Right, right. So, what is heavy water? Okay, heavy water has uh, 18. O18. Right. Is that why it's considered heavy water? Exactly, exactly. Else, the normal water have O16. Right. The oxygen isotopes in the melted ice, right, reflect the air temperature at that time with the ice layer were formed. So what is happening? How how they are uh, 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 how they are measuring the climate change? They drill in the ice, right? And uh, the air trapped between these ice layer, right? So possibility that uh, air trapped 200 year back 300 year back 1000 year back so that is captured and with the help of that composition of so that air we come to know what was the quality of air and that time or what is the quality of air now this time so that is written over here sir uh, well, this uh, part says we can also use cores to measure atmospheric carbon dioxide levels what is cores Course means record. Means, means uh, okay. Uh, right. Uh, course means well, means uh, look. Arctic and Greenland ice courses. So the uh, that is the area which is uh, just just frozen. Keep, keep on frozen throughout the year. Got it. There are certain area in Iceland and Greenland which which never melt down. Which never melt down. Those are called ice cores. Even in Himalaya, the, the top areas of Himalaya, like uh, the peaks of Himalaya, they never melt down. Never ever. So that is a core area. Got it? Got or not? Mm, can you explain that? Look, suppose that uh, this is the it's a diagram of Greenland. So now the winters are approaching. So this completely will be it will be covered by ice sheet. That is that we call ice sheet. Completely it will be covered by ice sheet. Now when the summers will come, what will summer, be covered by ice sheet? Because the the, the earth earth the earth is slanted. So uh, the uh, sun rays of the sun rays of the sun they uh, uh, fall on the uh, ice land slanted for the next six months. So this will this will be covered by ice. Temperature will already uh, always increase. Uh, so decrease. What will be covered in ice? Sorry, what will what? What will be covered in ice? You keep on saying that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, water, water, water will be covered oh, with okay. ice. Completely okay. ice. They will be complete. So okay. then, what will happen? Uh, but then, when the summer will approach, then ice will start melting. But there are some area where ice will never melt. Either it's Either it's winter or it's summer because of height, because of that weather, right? So because of the local weather, this ice never melt, right? So we call this what ice core areas. Got it? Core areas of ice cap or ice sheet. Got core it? areas of ice. Yes, core areas of ice. Okay. Where okay. it will never melt. And sir, so, how how can isotopes be frozen? It says sorry? frozen isotopes. Sorry. How can okay. isotopes be frozen? Okay, okay. So look. Suppose that the uh, ice will fall down. Sorry, snow will fall down and convert into ice. So from where the snow came, from the water. Suppose that. Today we are sitting in 2022. So 2022 in winter snowfall will take place. Will it take place or not? It will. So from where the snow will come? Come from water. From where the water formation will take place? From oxygen. 
So suppose that today the O18 is more. So the snow will have more amount of O18. Now the snow will get down and it will convert into ice. Now the ice will have more O18. Now it will keep on depositing, keep on depositing, but it is not melting. After the 1000 years, after next, next, in next century, right? In next century, what will happen? Another kind of the water will formation will take place. The composition of the water will change. Composition of the snow will change. Composition of the ice will change. Again, another sheet will be made on this above this sheet. So both of the sheet will have different composition because the water composition was different on that time. Got it? Sir, how can we measure uh, what kind of oxygen isotope is in the ice? Okay, so what will happen? They drill. So suppose that they have drilled um, they, they, uh, 100 feet, right? So they will measure that in 100 feet. What was the time when the ice melt, uh, the ice was, uh, ice formation taken place? They will take out of that sample of ice and they will keep it, uh, take it to laboratory and with the help of radioactivity because O18 is radioactive element, right? Cyclotop, it's slightly radioactive. So with the help of uh, 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 chemical reactions, they will come to know what is the composition, how much amount of the okay. oil is present in that water, okay. in one gram water, right? So maybe on that time, one gram water have less amount of the O18, but nowadays the that the same uh, like uh, uh, the ice will have more 18. So that's how they collect it. Got it? Yes. So the oxygen the oxygen isotope in melted ice proportion of O18 and O16, right? Because basically this is O16. O18 is found in very less amount. So reflect the air temperature on that time, right? So with the help of O18, you can measure what was the temperature on that time. At that time, the ice layer was formed. We also uses the core, the uh, cores to measure the atmospheric carbon dioxide level. So with the help of this, we measure the carbon dioxide level as well. What was the what would have been the carbon dioxide level on that time when this water was formed, right? The precision of analysis of the air samples from the core ice given in, given as 0 0.2 ppm. ppm means part per million. So this is just analytical things. Okay, so uh, the amount of O16 and O18 tells um, what temperature it was at that time. Exactly, and what amount of the carbon dioxide was on, on that time. Okay, so if there's more O18, then what does it mean? It means the pure is, uh, air is more pure, temperature is less. So temperature is less if O18 is more. Right, right. Okay. Right, so that is the graph which show over there, temperature. Ice is layers and three lakhs year ago, two lakh year ago, one lakh year ago. Now today, right? So what is the like uh, temperature on? So what is interglacials? What is the interglacials? Uh, have you have you listened about the ice age? Yeah, I don't know what is ice age. Okay, look, <laughs> it's a very interesting story. Uh, I don't want to discuss that, but if you have asked, then I'll I'll, I'll tell you. Look, but I, what is happening uh, nowadays? We are saying that average Earth temperature is increasing. So, what we need to do? Tell me, or what is suggested that what we need to do? Can you repeat that? Sorry, I, I wasn't hearing. I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat it? Okay, yeah, I'm repeating. So, uh, average earth temperature increasing. And I have discussed you, I have told you that what would be the uh, demerits of the increase in earth temperature or what, what, what can be the worst effect of the increasing earth average temperature. So, what should be done to control this increasing temperature? What we can do? Reduce deforestation. Okay. 
in total we need to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases sorry 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 carbon dioxide correct yeah yeah reduce the carbon dioxide gas reduce the methane gas if possible as much as possible reduce the water vapor production and all that right so who need to reduce the amount this amount human those country who are top contributor right oh yes who is the top contributor america america really really america america is the top contributor of the carbon dioxide emission america greenhouse gases the most top contributor is america oh my god okay. then comes many country like leading countries european countries because they are their lifestyle is different they are using more machinery their production is more right so america european countries they are responsible for then it comes to the india and china right so we are saying that india and china is half of the population of the world that's true yes right so we are saying that first you stop the because you are developed one so you have to reduce the carbon dioxide emission but america is powerful european countries are powerful they are not going to do that what they want they want us to stop it that but they yeah. they don't want to do do it by the, themselves now what america is saying this is nothing there is nothing like global warming america is saying ice age is going down going it's going so what is the ice age there is a one theory of ice age in geography which says that after every time after a there is a cycle when the earth water will completely frozen means come this earth will become completely frozen ice age will come then temperature will increase and this ice will melt, melt completely then again in next cycle again the this water will completely frozen then it will melt down so what what is suggested that the uh, we have completed the four ice ages and fifth is fifth ice is uh, sorry this fourth ice is going down right it is about to finish that's why the ice is ice caps are melting did you got my point Yes. So that is the ice age. So the difference. Sir, in the such, graph, there is a reduction. Right. Interglacial yes. cycle uh, means. In temperature, that, today. Sorry. Why is that? Sorry, sorry. Uh, in the graph, there is a reduction. Uh, today. Why is that? Is it because of uh, global warming? So look, the temperature is given in minus. Yeah. So is the minus temperature? Look, this is becoming minus sixteen because of the global warming. Uh huh. So is well, that a good thing or a bad thing? That is a bad thing. Okay. So interglacial cycle. What is the time period between the two ice age? It's called interglacial cycle. Got it? Uh, between two what? Between two ice age. Okay. Okay. Or What is Alino? I don't know that. Uh, interglacial cycle. Alino, what happens uh, when the, it is a type of wind stream? When this wind stream will start flowing down, uh, this wind stream start flow from the uh, uh, Mediterranean Sea to uh, Indian Sea, right? When it is start flowing down, what will happen? Drought will come. That is called Alino. Mm hmm. Okay, means temperature will increase and drought will come. Only no. So, but they are not going to ask you from this graph and as well. Right? You need to just understand. Okay. What is dendrochronology? Can you tell me? What is dendrochronology? Very simple. No, I don't know. Ah, uh, suppose that you must have seen many trees. So, right? Suppose that this is yeah. a tree, and you must have seen like uh, the tree died, and what people did, they cut it down. They cut down the trees. Yes, have you seen this kind of the trees? Yeah. When you'll see it deeply, you will find there are certain rings. 
Have you seen this also? These rings? Yeah. If you count these rings, then you can tell the age of the plant, this plant, which died. And this process is called dendrochronology. Got it? Yes. So what happens? Suppose that this is a transfer section of a stem, an older tree, TS of a stem. This is transfer section of a stem. What will happen? And uh, suppose that this is winter. Then in winter, a ring will be formed that will be light color. Then what will happen? Now the summer will come. In summer, there will be, sorry, in winter, it will be dark color, right? In summer, there will be light color, right? Again, the winter will come. There will be dark color ring. Again, summer will come. There will be light color ring, right? So there are total, how many rings? Four rings. So how many years are there? What is the age of plant? Come on. How many rings are formed every year? A farm? Yes. Rings. How many rings are formed every year? One. Not one. Mm, In two, one year, two. there will be one winter, one summer. Yeah, two. Two rings. So a plant have four rings. So what is the age of plant? Two years. The technique which we use that is called dendrochronology. Got it? Okay, so this technique is called dendrochronology. Right, right, right. This technique is known as dendrochronology. Right. So what happened? Actually, uh, the growth rings up. The growth takes place, but uh, in summer, the uh, plant require more water. Hence, the color of the ring is uh, lighter color. And uh, in winter, plant require less water. Then the color of this wood will be darker. So one dark and one uh, light ring means two seasons, means one year. So suppose that a plant stem ha has been cut down and somebody comes to move me and he says that this plant stem have 60 rings. Light, dark, light, dark, 60 total rings. I'll say that this tree have passed 60 season, 60 winter, 60, sorry, uh, out of 30 winter and 30 summers. So the total age of the tree is 30 years. Clear? Yes. Okay. So please note it down, dendrochronology. Dendro. Dendro. Dendrochronology. Note it down. Dendrochronology is dendrochronology is the process to tell the process to tell the age of plant the age of plant The process tell the age of plant by counting growth rings. By counting growth rings. By counting the growth rings. Full stop. The growth rings formed during. Winter is of 
The growth rings during winter what? The growth ring form during winter is of darker in color and in summer in summers lighter in color full stop hence at every year two growth rings hence at every year two growth rings are formed full stop this technique is applicable in only those areas where season changes not in those area where seasons not changes like north america throughout the year snow remains throughout the year there are winters season do not changes so ring formation do not take place to formation of the ring there should be alternate winter and summers minimum right now what is the dendroclimatology so dendrochronology we got it dendrochronology it is the study of what dendrochronology can tell us about the climate change in the past so we use the dendrochronology in climate change and we call this technique dendroclimatology because the wood formation also depend on the temperature right also depend on the climate right so please note it down dendroclimatology next paragraph dendroclimatology is the study of what dendrochronology what dendrochronology can tell us about climate change in past full stop uh what dendrochronology can tell us dendrochronology can tell us about the climate in the past full stop the growth of trees and wood formation the growth of trees and wood formation depends on many factor depends on many factor including many factor including the temperature carbon dioxide sunlight temperature carbon dioxide sunlight rainfall etc right so that was the dendrochronology and dendroclimatology got it so study of temperature or climate change 
with the help of dendrochronology is called dendroclimatology. Did you got that point of half? Yes. Okay. That's fine. Look, the rings are uh, actual rings are visible over here in this diagram, and you can consider, you can count. These rings are actually visible. <laughs> Peat bog. What is the peat bog? I don't know. There is a type of coal that is called peat. It's very uh, third grade of coal. So what is the peat bogs? First. Okay. Peat box. So there is a type of plant. That is called sphagnum. It's a type of mosses. Do you know the plant is sphagnum? What is the beauty of sphagnum? No. Any idea? What is sphagnum? I don't know, sir. Never listen. Okay. So listen and remember it. Sphagnum is a type of moss plant. You must have listened about the mosses. Yes? Yeah. Okay. A sphagnum type of moss, basically it grew on the water. Right. In Second World War, the bloodshed taken enormously. And because of attack, the cotton production stopped. Cotton cropping stopped. And in many area, cotton growing area, the crops burn out because of the bombing, shelling and all that. And demand of cotton was unlimited. Why? Because of everywhere uh, the bloodshed taken place and the cotton is used to remove like uh, uh, that uh, in the healing process and then like absorbing the blood and all that. Right. So cotton was not available. So in place of the cotton, sphagnum was used. The property of sphagnum that the sphagnum can absorb the water 500 times than its weight. If one, gra one gram sphagnum is with you, then you can absorb 500 gram water with the help of one gram sphagnum. Got it? That is a highly absorber cap capability. Second. Okay, so sphagnum is more absorbent than cotton. Exactly. And dried sphagnum, put the dried sphagnum in water and you will see after five days, there is a green plant. Do not die. Mm -hmm. You will see that these are, these are, this is the dry grass. There is not life. Put this sphagnum, that sphagnum and you must have seen the other people selling the small bundle of the, uh, some uh, dried grasses everywhere. And when you take it in your home, put, put it in water and uh, like uh, make it wet. You will see that the complete green plant is there. That is the beauty of sphagnum. One more thing is sphagnum had antiseptic capability as well. If you if if sphagnum is present in that water, you will not have there will not be any bacteria in that water. That is also a proper property of sphagnum. So in Second World War, in place of the cotton, sphagnum was used. Right. Now got it. How much important is it? Yes. Okay. So uh, now what happened over the years, sphagnum was like predominantly present and uh, sphagnum like when the earthquake came and all that, then sphagnum uh, was uh, like it buried inside the, uh, uh, inside the uh, earth and over there, over the thousands of years, the formation of coal taken place. So the coal which is formed from the sphagnum is called, what is called? Peat coal. Got it? So the marshy area where sphagnum was present, these are called peat bogs. The coal which is formed from sphagnum is called peat coal. This is third quality of coal. coal. Got it? Yes. Okay. The peat is very acidic, cool and anaerobic, which prevent bacteria from decomposing organic material. Look, it is getting worse. As a result, 
peat reserve the pollen grain mosses pollen even plant tissues we can look back at the time of the plant mosses growing around the area in hundreds even the thousands of years ago sampling the core sampling the core of peat so got it peat yeah it's okay. a hole from the sphagnum mosses right 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 this is the coal which is formed from the sphagnum so what you can you can take the sample of that peat coal and from that peat coal you can you can you can assume that what would have been the condition on that time and what was the temperature at that time what was the amount of the carbon dioxide at that time with the help of the sample of this peat coal got it yes as clearly reflect how the climate change right uh, as the type of the plant we can grow in that area affected by the climate right the pollen mosses record given clear the reflection how the climate change with over the time right for example the presence of <coughs> cotton grass and some species of sphagnum mosses indicate the cooler so sphagnum mosses indicate the cooler and wet conditions right if is sphagnum was abundant in that area means the conditions were cooler and wet whereas the species of sphagnum and a species of polytrichum mosses reflect the period or the drier condition of the bogs right so it will tell you that which species grows in the drier and wetter area which species grows in uh, uh, cooler and wet area right so with the help of sphagnum we tell the uh, older record uh, about the temperature about the climatic conditions these are called peat bog records got it we want to note it down okay so if there are more mosses then it was more hot in that weather no no it depends right sphagnum which species suppose that the species which is uh, grown in wet and cooler area uh -huh. right that is present more amount that is present in major major amount in peat bogs right so you will say when the coal formation take place on that time this species was dominating at that area and this species is found in cooler and wet area it means the temperature was less on that time okay so after handed uh, yes um the species of sphagnum in peat bogs right if one is more then it was cooler than if the other is more then it was drier right. and more hot oh, you got it. right okay uh, so uh, we like uh, in, uh, we goes down in, inside the earth right uh, uh, then the we got the peat box so first we found the temperature was less then after the like 100 feet above that i got another coal layer uh, that was peat box we checked now we checked that the this the, the peat peat which is formed from the sphagnum this species is found in drier and higher temperature area right so with the help of that we can assume that after the after that many years the temperature become more and the conditions become more drier drier right so with the help of strata checking of the strata of the peat box we can tell the temperature we can tell the atmospheric condition got it yes okay Sorry, I uh, need to ask something. Yeah, sure. So I was given assignments, uh, I guess on 13th or 14th, and they were due yesterday. And uh, I had a wedding to attend. It was my uncle's wedding, and I told them that I can't submit on 15th. And um, I tried to submit them today, but I can't. So what do I do now? Uh, just make an assignment and submit them. They'll they'll send it to me. I'll I'll check I'll check that. right okay so I, i should just send them on whatsapp or on the app it i can it says it's expired uh, so, so how 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 do, how do, how did they they shared with you what what uh, what means? they they sent me a message on whatsapp saying that you have assignments yeah, and so i went to the app and i found them there and so solve solve that assignment. assignment solve that assignment in your uh, uh, that uh, notebook right scan that uh -huh. properly scan that properly uh -huh. so that it become legible when i open it in the the laptop right scan okay. it properly and then send them send them back right and okay. while sending what what you have to do suppose that there is a assignment so assignment number 
question number one, right? Assignment number okay. one. Topic, okay. then the question number and the question is answer number one, answer number two, answer number three. You have to zone it down in this way so that they could okay. understand that what is the assignment, right? Okay. Okay, so I should just send them via WhatsApp or should I send it to you? No, no, just just send them on the WhatsApp, right? Okay. Because even because they are there is a particular team dedicated for uh, keeping the record, keeping the assignment, right? So they keep uh -huh, recording okay. system. So okay. if, <laughs> if you'll send me, then what they will say, they, they will say that I have shared the, like the team have shared the question, but the student have not shared the answer. Right? Okay. Now increase in data reliability. Right. So the data which you got for the climate change, is it reliable or not? That is also a question. Right. How much reliable? That is also a question. So we can use the both dendro chronology and feed box dating to the confirm radio carbon dating. So do you know the radio carbon dating? Uh, no. No? No. There is the normal carbon C12 and one more isotope that is called C14. This C14, yes, C14. This C14 is what? Isotope of carbon. Right, right. It is radioactive. Right. So, with the help of C14, we came to know what is the age of dinosaur when the dinosaur used to exist on the earth. Clear? Because yes. half life, do you know half the half life? Uh, yes. I guess. So half life of the this one C14 is approximately 5900 years, right? So with the help of carbon dating, with the help of C14, we can tell the age of any plant or animal fossil. This oh, fossil like do plants. they do they take in C14 instead of C12? Uh, actually, uh, in in place of like. And like uh, the human bone, right? So human bone, suppose that uh, the, the weight of the bone is one kilogram, right? In one kilogram, if there is 5% of carbon, right? Carbon 12, then there may be 0.1% of C14 as well, right? Now, decay of this C14, over the time it will decay because this is radioactive, over the time it decay, right? So we can say that next 50, 5900 year, how much it will become? 0. Point? Come on. Sorry, sorry, I couldn't hear you the whole time. Oh, so what is the carbon dating? So suppose that there is a one kilogram of bone in my body, human body, right? Okay. So in that bone, there is a 5% of carbon-12. So mm -hmm. there will be, there may be 0.01% of carbon-14. We have both of the carbon in our body, okay. right? So C14 is present. So over the year, this, this, this carbon will decay because this is radioactive. Over the years, what? It will decay, decay. Yeah. Because every radioactive material decay, right? Okay. So I have told you what is the half-life of C14 is. 5900 years? Yeah. So this 0.1% after next 5900 years, how much it will remain? 0.5? 0.05? Right. Next, next, next. 0.0425? Right? So yeah. with the help of this one, we can tell the age of any bone, any plant part. And can we tell it or not? Okay. This process of telling the age is called carbon dating. Okay. Got it? Please note it down. Radio okay. carbon dating. Radio carbon dating. This is the process of this is the process of calculating age of 
एज ऑफ एनी ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड एज ऑफ एनी ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड एज ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ सी प्रोटीन राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी कैन कैलकुलेट द एज ऑफ fossilized wood bones pollen grain etc we can calculate the age of what age of wood fossilized age of fossilized wood bones pollen grain etc right so now listen for example we can date the wood or peat bog sample of known as from the radiocarbon radiocarbon measurement using the remains of the plant and pollen grains these give an indication of climatic condition at that time those plant were alive which will link to historically record event such as a flood such as a flood extreme cold weather we can compare the result to the view to the result to a given form of calibration this gives scientists to clear reflect uh, clear reference point which they uh, they can use to determine the accuracy of estimated age making the data considerably more reliable right so with the help of carbon dating we can calculate we can we can know the what was the climatic condition on that time right so that's how we check the reliability of data what is uh, so, yes uh, sir what does this mean for example we can date wood or peat bog samples of no suppose age. that look suppose that with the help of a species of peat we have guessed or we have estimated that there should be this much temperature there should be this much temperature with the help of peat box right with the help of dendrochronology you have calculated the temperature and carbon dioxide and climatic condition on that time now this is the time to cross check that whatever we did is it reliable or not now we use another technique carbon dating so while using the that species system so with the help of carbon dating we can tell the age of that uh, uh, that peat box right so we uh the, these these two data we verify these two data with the help of carbon dating got it yes are we calculating right or not so that is called reliability of data and that is called calibration got it yes now evidences of increasing the level of carbon dioxide scientists have found evidence for increasing the level of carbon dioxide in atmosphere in many different ways some of the most famous evidences come from what we know that killing curve killing curve a series of measurements which have taken regular interval mauna loa observatory in hawaii island right the air sample continuously at the top of four 7 meter tall towers early average of the carbon dioxide concentration so there are seven ta seven towers seven seven meter tall towers and uh, every hour they collect the carbon dioxide concentration they take the sample of air the air these are relatively free from the local pollutants and scientists believe that it is a uh, representative of the air of northern hemisphere scientists think that this the this this uh, when we take the sample from the hawaii air 
Hawaii uh, Island. It means this is this is the air sample of northern hemisphere. Measurement stands in uh, started in 1958, and monitoring the method and instrument used have remained very similar how, uh, throughout the time. So the same equipments are used throughout the time. The record shows that the level of atmospheric carbon dioxide has increased. 35098 pp pp mv <coughs> part per million by volume dry year in in 59 to 408.68 pp mv in 2018 the annual fluctuation level of the carbon dioxide seems to the result of the single differential so that that is the data which have been collected in hawaiian island and that's how we have calculated that yes, the level of the carbon dioxide have increased over the years in half of this. Clear? So okay, so you do these multiple um, methods processes to cross check if you're right or not. Right, right, right. Okay. right. Your data. Uh, remember this data. This is which has been given. This one, right? Clear. Yes, yes. Uh, so what is what else left? The global warming debate. Ah, come on. Global warming debate. Next class we'll discuss this global warming debate. Climate change and other limitations. What is the climate change? The biological impact on the climate change. Right, so rest of the topic we'll discuss in next class. Clear? Yes. Okay. So, any question? No. Oh. I asked them for other class. You have another class? 